Good evening and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Let's uh, start off with uh, uh, just a quick pause here and those that would like to join me, please bow your heads as we begin our meeting. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity that we have to go about doing the city's business. We ask that you be with us in all our decisions. Uh, be with all our city workers uh, to keep them safe and in your will. And a special thanks uh, to all of those that uh, had uh, Dan Fitzpatrick on your mind uh, um, for healing, and he's doing very well at home. And so we just thank you for that and ask you to be with us in his name. Amen. I pledge allegiance. To our city clerk, uh, roll call, please. Councilman Fitzpatrick is excused. Councilman Tibbs. Councilwoman Bench. Present. Mayor Pro Tem O'Neill. Present. Councilman Caloris. Present. Councilwoman Moore. Present. Councilman Balls. Present. Councilman Clark. Here. Mayor Browning. Here. We have eight members present and one excused. And before we start, uh, just remind our audience to uh, remain quiet and refrain from uh, speaking. Um, or any other uh, actions that might uh, interrupt the meeting. Uh, tonight, right now, is a very good time. Take your cell phones, please. Let's just check them to make sure that uh, they're on vibrate uh, or turned off for that. So appreciate that. Uh, so, and uh, gentlemen, uh, please remove your hats in the chamber, please. And uh, to our city clerk. Yes, we are at announcements. Yes, I do have one. Uh, as a reminder, our March 16th, our next regular city council meeting, will be Student Government Day. And the meeting will convene at 12 o'clock noon rather than the 6 o'clock p.m. starting time. And with that, the filing deadline for any personal appearances will be Friday, March 13th at 4 o'clock p.m. So next council meeting here. At 12 noon, and yes. the city, it's our student government day, and many of the schools will be represented, too, so that's good. Uh, council members, you did get a, you should have got an itinerary of what the whole schedule is for the day, so other than the city council meeting, if you want to join us during that day, you certainly are welcome to do that. So. And tonight, we would normally begin with our council remarks since we have no personal appearances. Is that correct? Yes, there are no personal appearances. So your next order of business are the remarks of council. And since uh, uh, Councilman uh, uh, Dan Fitzpatrick uh, uh, and, and for the rest of you uh, uh, here, uh, Councilman Fitzpatrick is resting at home very comfortably, going through the normal healing process after his uh, surgery. So. Um, it's going to be just a little bit longer before he has any visitors, so please uh, keep him in your thoughts. And uh, we're just so glad everything else uh, worked out well. That moves us over to Councilman Clock. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. But other than saying uh, I'm happy to hear Mr. Fitzpatrick is doing well, I have nothing to, to say. Very good. Then Councilman Michael Ball. Thank you. Uh, good evening, citizens. Everybody that's here, I'd like to thank you for coming and sharing these meetings with us. Uh, I don't have a lot to share this evening, but I would like to remind everybody about the uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters of uh, the Great Lake Bay region is having a uh, bowl-a-thon coming up. If anybody were interested in uh, donating, you can go online and look up Big Brothers, and, and you can find out what's going on. Uh, it's one of the biggest fundraisers of the Big Brothers program. It's how we uh, normally take care of all our littles and things that we do in that nature by our uh, bowl. Um, other than that, I don't really have too much to say this evening. Mayor, thank you. Councilman Balk, you're taking a uh, uh, request for your uh, bowling. Are you going to be bowling at yourself? And, uh, no, sir, I'm not going to be bowling. You, okay, no I pledges then. No pledges. My okay. little brother will be in, uh, will be in uh, Florida. Okay. Uh, Disney World. He didn't take me, so. He didn't take you. <laughs> so we're not going to bowl. It might be something to look at in the future. Right. Right? <laughs> Councilwoman Brenda Moore. Good evening, everyone. Not very much to say this evening other than thank you all for coming and stay warm. 
Thank you. Councilman Larry Clark. I have no comments on it. Mayor Pro Tem, Mamos O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, I'd like to uh, express appreciation to the uh, First Ward Community Center for having a great Taste of Soul event. A lot of members of the councils were there. Uh, it's one of the uh, premier events uh, during Black History Month at the uh, First Ward Community Center. We're very well attended. A lot of city staff were there as well. Uh, so Mr. Stipple had, uh, he had a big plate of ribs. And uh, <laughs> he asked him if he took care of him. He said he did. So, But uh, very well attended event and it's for the, uh, for the uh, program uh, uh, to make sure kids have something to do after school. So very pleased to, to have been there. So that concludes my comments, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I too would like to send my well wishes to Councilman Fitzpatrick, and uh, I also would like to congratulate First Ward on another successful fundraiser. It was it was a lovely event, as Mayor Pro Tem O'Neill has said. So, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today. Uh, just a a few congratulations or recognition. Uh, I know it's been a while, but uh, you landed Ms. Jones and the OMB office for their Distinguished Budget and Presentation Award. Um, a great job. I think that was a couple years in a row. There's a couple of officers who were uh, promoted. <coughs> um, Officer Gass, Matt Eye, and Bell. Uh, congratulations on your long-time service. Um, Gilbert Guevara, he was elected Vice President of the uh, Hispanic Latino Commission, a, uh, a state statewide office it gives the city another presence in a in a statewide uh, or excuse me in a in a, uh, a commission or a organization that uh, has a statewide presence um, one week one street um, they're relentless they're having another meeting to to uh, discuss the uh, the old state fairgrounds I wish them all the luck and uh, and whatever I can do to help uh, don't hesitate to call me um, there's a new business uh, in the city of Saginaw, uh, You Me Paint. Um, I guess you can rent the place and uh, and you can uh, do personal art. Uh, it's in the Old Town District at uh, 804 South Hamilton. Uh, they had a great Valentine event there and um, it was a nice setting um, for friends and family to uh, to just spend some time together in the city of Saginaw. Uh, First Ward did a great job with their uh, Taste of Soul, uh, as several of uh, our council members and city was present. Um, I would also like to uh, recognize the uh, fire department in their effort. I guess I would just would know what the city would do uh, without your presence. Uh, there was a, could have been a pretty horrific or dangerous fire at uh, High Rise. And uh, as always, uh, professional and, and teamwork and, uh, and effort. and. Uh, <clears throat> what could have been a horrific situation was somewhat contained. Um, thank you for your service. Um, and that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, once again, thank you for everyone for attending. A couple things I'd uh, like to just uh, uh, make comment on. I did attend the uh, uh, what we call the fairgrounds meeting today. We had uh, federal and state um, and uh, our city officials uh, there meeting with uh, and brainstorming uh, of, of the old fairgrounds and trying to uh, make that into a, a real nice, impressive uh, a green zone over there with activities uh, for families and so forth. So that's uh, that's an ongoing uh, project that uh, one uh, you know one week one street uh, is kind of heading up that uh, now. So uh, we had some very good uh, dialogue today on that, and looking forward to some things happening uh, maybe in the near future. Um, our Saginaw Art Museum, a beautiful place, is having their fundraiser this, uh, this weekend. And uh, so uh, that also goes on besides the uh, Big Brothers and Sisters um, program. So uh, we like to support those uh, local ones. Um, I, my, my hat's off to the Saginaw Housing Commission and all those involved uh, with that fire, our Saginaw Fire Department, uh, and all those who were involved. Uh, in the in the, uh, the fire that we had at the high rise, uh, uh, boy, there was there's there was uh, no loss of life. Uh, some people did receive some medical care, uh, but um, they're back into the high rise and, and they're they're doing well. Uh, 
which brings me uh, to my next uh, item is uh, close and dear to my heart uh, is the American Red Cross and they played an important part of that also we have uh, our fire department uh, many times has to refer uh, city residents who have fires uh, to the American Red Cross March is uh, National um, American Red Cross month so uh, this month uh, a lot of activities going on with that and uh, so uh, they play a, a, a very important part in our community. Uh, we don't, sometimes we, we think of national, na national disasters, but uh, even just a house fire in the city of Saginaw, people are displaced, the American Red Cross are there to help them out uh, um, temporarily until they can get some things. So uh, we're very, very pleased. Um, and as you know, that they have consolidated the Great Lakes Bay region They've closed the office in Bay City. They've closed the office in Midland. And those are all consolidated over uh, in the 1200 block of North Michigan. So we're very fortunate that they uh, have chose to be right here in the city of Saginaw for their Great Lakes Bay region. So that uh, that's, uh, speaks very highly of, of our city and, and the importance they, they have a presence here. So we're very, very pleased with that. So with those comments, uh, we're next to move on, Madam Clerk. We are now at reports of manager. All right, Mr. Manager, do you have some reports for us? Yep, a few um, updates first, and then we have a, a presentation tonight. Uh, I wanted to let council know that um, the mayor and mayor pro tem and I did meet with Congressman Kildee uh, Wednesday following the last council meeting, so I think it was a good meeting. And um, again, same with our with our local legislators. If you have issues that you um, you want us to relay to him, I'm sure we can set up future meetings or perhaps if additional council members want to attend, we can uh, look into doing that as well. And I also wanted to mention, um, as Councilman Tibbs did, it was uh, a little over a week ago, we had three uh, police promotions uh, promoted to Lieutenant Craig Bell and then to Sergeant Jeff Maddai and, and uh, Steve Gass. And um, this is going to help us with our overtime in the long run. Um, so it's something that uh, Chief and I talked about doing and uh, felt that this was the right time to do that uh, given the situation we are with our staffing levels. And we'll continue to work with uh, COAM on finalizing um, their contract as well. But this is something that, that we felt was a, a good time to do. So congratulations to those three on their promotions. And, um, and I think they're, they're going to do a great job, all three of them. And um, I often get asked for updates on, um, on some of the developments in the city. And so I wanted to let everyone know that Delta College is still um, working on their site location for um, their downtown Saginaw facility. Uh, they expect um, to have something final within the next few months, but I also wanted to let you know this type of support that we're getting, or Delta College is getting from uh, legislators from Mid Midland County, Bay County, and Saginaw County is outstanding. They're all standing together on building this and, and getting funding for it in the city of Saginaw, so I wanted to let you all know that as well. Uh, and then um, finally, um, I like to, to let council know and also department heads when I get comments from the public, but I was approached by uh, Paul Chafee at the Saginaw Future Awards and um, he wanted to make sure that the city knows that Mike Hagan is a um, volunteer, contacted him about helping with the light up the, the chapels um, project and Mike uh, took it on himself to, to volunteer to help out with that and wanted to, wanted to help and um, just wanted to get permission before he did it, so um, Paul Chapey said to let uh, the department know and council know that, uh, that Mike Kagan is stepping up and, and doing those kind of things on his own. So um, Mike's always been great to work with and he'll, he'll take on any project, so wanted to let everyone know that as well. And additionally, um, the police and consumers and all of the other sponsors are starting to work on Light Up the City now. So. You'll be hearing more about that, and probably as we get closer to June, we'll have something here at Council um, this Thursday, I believe, at the Chamber of Commerce Percolator Breakfast is um, kind of an overview of that as well, if you're interested in going to that. Um, I know Councilman Cloris will be going, so um, it's to help um, 
get support again from the business community in the area. And one, um, we often uh, congratulate areas that are doing things to, to help um, promote themselves or help fund themselves, uh, similar to the bid district in Old Town. So um, our office was contacted by um, the Saginaw Valley Police Canine Association and Officer Stacer, one of our canine officers. Um, the organization has been a big help to the city for our canine uh, officers and, and helps raise funds and pay for pretty much our whole program as far as the dog, taking care of the dog and uh, uh, training classes, veterinary bills, that type of thing. So um, I'd like to bring up um, Officer Stacer and uh, Jody Wilk, who is the director of um, the Saginaw Valley Police Canine Association. Good evening. Uh, we want to first thank you for allowing us a few minutes to fill you in on the different things that we've been doing, uh, the money that we've spent, and pretty much how we've kept the canine program going for the Saginaw Police Department. I am Jody Wilk, and this is Doug Stacer and Jeff Wenzel, the two canine units for the Saginaw Police Department. So the Saginaw Valley Police Canine Association first came around because in 2013, the council was faced with a very difficult decision with some budget cuts for the Saginaw Police Department. And with that, there was some concern that we were gonna lose the canine program here in the city. So our primary mission is to first keep the Saginaw Police Canine programs going, and then also to possibly even reach out to other departments to help with their requests or their needs for canine programs. In addition to the, the providing the funding and keeping the programs going, there's a few other things that we also do as a result. Uh, we're always constantly educating the, the public on what police canines do and why they're beneficial for the public. It is also providing positive public relations with the police for the police department. And then also it's building bridges with the youth uh, too often we see where there's kids who are afraid of the police and we want them to be able to turn to the police as opposed to running away or, or being afraid of them. So in, in the community relations that we do, we help build those brid bridges and, and repair any possible concerns that they might have. So in order to do that, we had to collaborate. Uh, I'm from the Standish area, I'm not from Saginaw. So we first contacted the Saginaw Police Department. We sat down uh, with the administration and explained what we wanted to do. I've been keeping the Aranet County Sheriff Canine Program going for going on five years now. So I had a little bit of fundraising experience. Uh, and then we also had the support of the two canine units here willing to donate their time, basically volunteer. Majority of the, the time, they're not getting paid for the events that we do. Uh, we also then contacted the Saginaw Community Foundation. We needed the, a, a reliable and trustworthy program to place our money. We wanted businesses to be able to donate and individuals to donate with confidence knowing that the money is being taken care of, it's not being used, uh, it's be, that it's being used appropriately. So, and then we've also built relationships with the area neighborhood associations, particularly the Southwest Saginaw Neighborhood Association. And then uh, canine associations across the country, uh, not just in Michigan, but California, Arizona, Georgia, uh, all over, all over the country. We've learned what they're doing there, what's works for them, and how they might work for us. So the benefits of a canine unit. Uh, dogs can clear a room faster. It's a little bit safer for the people. They can, seven times faster than a human, they're able to, to clear a room. Uh, they can search a building within 10 minutes, whereas it would take a, a human three to four hours. They can indicate to narcotics and explosives that humans can't scent. 
and then also uh, just the different areas that they can search. So just some, some guidelines, you, you each have a packet, so just give you an idea of why we want canine units. Okay, so a little bit about our handlers. Uh, officer Wenzel, uh, he is currently your community police officer for Quadrant 2. Uh, his canine partner is Kilo, who is a German Shepherd, was born November 8th of 2008, uh, and they've been together since 2010. Uh, both canine units are dual purpose narcotics, which allows that, that means that they are able to detect narcotics, and then also they're trained for apprehension. So they can track people, missing people, or fleeing suspects. Officer Stacer is currently going through the School Resor Resource Explorer Program, correct? Mm -hmm. And is also a canine instructor at Delta College. Uh, his canine partner is Kanjo, who is with us tonight. Born August 10th, 2010. They've been together since October 2011, and he too is a dual purpose narcotics canine. And I work midnight shift. So we work in the dark the best time of the day. So, in addition to the work that they do with the canines, they're also regular patrol. So, they kind of have double duty. Um, to give you an idea of the canine units that are currently in Saginaw County, uh, the Sheriff's Department has three. They have a dual purpose narcotics, which would be the same as the two Saginaw police. They have a single purpose narcotics, which means it's only allowed, to, or it's basically only trained to detect narcotics. And then they have a single purpose explosives. The do that dog can only detect bombs. Uh, the Michigan State Police also has a few canine units. However, they pretty much cover the Tri-County area. They're not just stationed in Saginaw. When they're home, when our canine units are home, they are oftentimes called upon if there's not another canine unit in the area. They may be called as an on-call basis to track somebody or whatever the, the specific need is at the time. So they're not just doing canine work. They are kind of double duty there. So they are approximately responding to about 240 total, 240 canine calls each year. Uh, it may not seem like a lot, but also keep in mind that they are also your regular patrol officers. So they're out there doing traffic stops, responding to calls. They, uh, the different calls that they've been called to would be tracks, uh, vehicle searches, different things, whatever they might need a canine for. Yeah, just a little quick on that. Yeah, we run every call that everybody else does. And then if there's a canine call, we run to that. So on our shifts running the small amount of people that we have, we, we stay pretty busy. Uh, on my shift I do, and I know on day shift they have a lot going on too. So yeah, we write every call everybody else does, plus run every dog call that, on my shift I'm the only dog in the county, I stay in the city, but if something like a bank robbery in Birch Run yesterday, they may call us out there to do a track. We stay in the city though, and we're both, I'm a city resident, so when I get called out, I'm here, so. Um, in addition to the work that they do with the canines, they also seize narcotics, thousands of dollars in cash, drug cat, drug money, um, and, the, and then the tracking of suspects, um, which is a huge, a huge need for the area. So what have we done for Saginaw since, since starting this? It's been about May 2013 when we've started covering all the expenses. Uh, I stopped in, it was, I believe, July of 2013, did a quick public comment saying, hey, we're, we're covering all these expenses now. So now I'm here to kind of show you and tell you what exactly we've done since then. So we have secured dog food donations. We have contacted multiple businesses. The businesses in Saginaw have been actually absolutely generous, uh, very supportive of the program. We've received a couple grants, one from the Saginaw Community Foundation and one from a company called Foreign Print that allowed us to uh, give out tattoo, temporary tattoos and coloring books to kids. 
We've had both canine patrol Tahoes painted. We've been to 50 plus community events across Saginaw County uh, and even outside of Saginaw County. Um, over a thousand volunteer officers, which has been done primarily before, between three to four people. And we've pretty much saved the Saginaw Police Department $26,000 since 2013. I'll tell you a little bit more about what those were. So our dog food donations, uh, Kilo, uh, Officer Wenzel's dog, his food is donated by Canada Pet Foods. And Kanjo's food is coming from Wysong, which is actually a Midland-based company. So for any of you who have pets, I highly recommend supporting the two wonderful companies that are providing food for both the dogs for their working life. The grants we've received. The four imprint grant was a $500 mini grant. Like I said, we had gotten coloring books and temporary tattoos to hand out to kids. And then the community foundation grant was actually the first grant that I had written. And with that, we purchased two heat alarms, two first aid kits, two, dog sets, two sets of dog boots, a bite suit, and a be behavior shaping device that's used for training. So the heat alarm, uh, thankfully, this was not one of our Saginaw vehicles, but to show you the importance behind the heat alarm, uh, this was, I'm not sure what department or state he's from. Uh, Officer Will Harris had shared this picture of his patrol vehicle. He had, just like the two officers here, they, he also was a patrol officer and was responding to a, call, uh, a complaint uh, while he was inside the home. Uh, his canine partner was in the vehicle. The vehicle was running with the air conditioning and he had an electrical fire in the patrol vehicle. The heat alarm will shut the vehicle off, roll the windows down, sound the horn and activate the lights, alerting surrounding people that there's something wrong with the vehicle. He was able to get back to his vehicle to safely remove his canine partner. Uh, thankfully, the only damage was to the actual vehicle and not to his partner. So uh, both vehicles now have those installed. They're approximately $700 each. Uh, this is Kilo showing off his dog boots. Just like us, the dog's paws are susceptible to cold, extreme temperatures, cold heat, and also glass or chemicals, different things that they might be going into when they go into to homes or businesses. He wasn't happy. <laughs> when we first got him on, we made sure to videotape him because they, uh, you know how cats are when they get something on their paws. The dogs are similar. Um, the bite suit uh, allows them to train for apprehensions or uh, if the middle picture here, uh, the, it was offer Officer Kashat wearing the, the bite suit was pretending to attack Officer Stacer uh, and Kanjo was protecting him. So uh, the bite suit will allow them to train to apprehend with any part of the body. Currently, or prior to the grant, the officers only had access to a bite sleeve, which would be just the arm. The behavior shaping device uh, is actually, it looks like normal totes, uh, storage totes. One of those has a, a launching mechanism that you can place the tennis ball on and you also hide the narcotics in there. And it teaches the dog to focus more on the narcotics as opposed to the handler who has the reward. So it also allows them to work off leash and press the button on the remote to release the reward from a further distance. And that was a demo at uh, Gander Mountain, actually. We go all over, we're in Saginaw Township. We even leave the county once in a while. But it, this was one of the numerous demos that we do was showing him how he finds narcotics. Uh, the, the biggest expense, uh, we had contacted a couple businesses to see if they would be willing to repaint the, the Tahoes. Uh, they were currently white, or at the time they were white. Um, Officer Stacer works nights and it's kind of difficult to be concealed when you're white like that and the, the decals uh, reflecting back. So uh, Draper Auto and Gary's Towing and Repair 
had generously, uh, which is, we figured it was a, approximately a $5,000 per truck job. Uh, both trucks are now black. They matches the rest of the Saginaw Police fleet. Better concealment at night. Um, kind of gave them a, a fresh look. So, so now we have two new, newly painted, look brand new, trucks. So some of the things that we've been doing, um, we were mentioning, the, I mentioned before, the, the different events that we've participated in. Um, we were at the Mid-Michigan Children's Museum. They asked us to, to come over and visit with the kids on their safety day. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite stories of all the different events that we've done. Officer Stacer had taken Kanjo around the museum and sat down with a little boy and for about 10 minutes they put together a puzzle. He didn't know at the time that this little boy had an extreme fear of police officers. We, I ended up talking to his grandma afterwards. She, she told me the whole story. She said she didn't understand why the boy was afraid. Uh, there were no family issues. Police had never been called, anything like that. But after the 10 minutes, she said that her grandson could not stop talking about the really nice police officer with his dog. So it's building, fixing, repairing any of those fears that the kids might have with just a simple interaction. So that was October of 2013. Uh, <laughs> Johnson's Giant Pumpkin Farm, we've been there three, three times, I believe. Uh, we're actually working with them to possibly build a, put a building on their property to permanently do fundraising through their sell the t-shirts and different things that we do. Um, each time we've been there, the crowds that have, have come around, that it gives, the, gives visitors an opportunity to meet the dogs, talk to the officers, see the inside of the patrol vehicle. Uh, again, just building the relations with the public. Uh, another, this particular picture, uh, Officer Stacer and Kanjo were standing out in front of the tent and this boy caught, saw Kanjo and immediately beelined right for him, which can sometimes be afraid, frightening because little kids running up to the dogs, if it's not, if they're not paying attention, you know, or how far are they going to go? Are they going to jump on the dog? Different things like that. He stopped about five feet short of Kanjo, sat down. Kanjo kind of looks at him, he's like, what are you doing? Um, and then walked over and laid right next to him. Um, it was a, I'm glad it was busy because I kind of get emotional and stuff like that and probably would have started crying. Uh, I believe the boy had autism or some sort of a disability. And to see the connection between him and Kanjo was, was pretty amazing. Uh, Frankenmuth hosts their dog bowl every Memorial Weekend. This will be our third year going back. Um, we've worked very closely with the Zender family uh, with, with the program. We are working on getting some demos set up for them to be part of the dog bowl program. KCQ, KCQ Country Fest on Ojibwe Island was one of the first big events that we participated in. Uh, the first year we went, over 100,000 attendees. It allowed us the opportunity to share with the public. It was kind of the first time that they really got a chance to, to see a police, off, a police canine unit. Hamil Street, Hamilton Street Motor Fest was another highly successful, again, meeting with people. Uh, it, it's just really great to see the interactions. And then National Night Out, uh, in Saginaw Township at the soccer complex is kind of one of those those events that we really want to be a part of because it's all emergency personnel. The demonstrations that these officers do, they go to schools, daycare centers, uh, they're going to be here on the 16th for your, for your student government day. Um, and again, these are primarily they're doing these on their own time. There's not any compensation. They do it because they enjoy it and they understand how, how important it is for kids to understand. 
uh, this was, Officer Wenzel shared this, this was a survey that the students had taken last year at the student day and just kind of highlighted the, uh, the, the impact that the canine unit had. 97% uh, of the students said that that was their favorite part of the presentation. So, um, a breakdown now of, earlier I had said that we had saved Saginaw $26,000. Here's about where, here's how it all breaks down. The dog food for both of the dogs is roughly $1,200 each dog. So $2,400 a year. $3,600 a year in maintenance training is what the city used to be paying that we now take care of. Uh, thankfully, we've not had any major health issues on the dogs, so vet care is low. Uh, roughly $5,600 for the grant, $1,000 um, for the e-collar training that allows them to work more with the, uh, the obedience and variety of training. $1,000 for pseudo-narcotics for them to train with, uh, roughly $10,000 for the new paint on the Tahoes. Uh, we won a contest on Facebook, which provided Officer Stacer with a $1,500 piece of equipment that he's now able to safely and securely store any of his equipment in the back of his Tahoe. And then an additional $1,100, almost $1,200 in a variety of training equipment and safety equipment for the dogs. So currently, we are financially secure should something happen to one of the dogs uh, replacement canine is approximately twelve thousand dollars we are prepared that if something was to happen to them one of the dogs retires uh, the dogs are just like humans they'll kind of let us know when they're done working um, it's going to cost pro approximately twelve thousand dollars to replace uh, if there's any huge large medical expense we're prepared to cover that and then also any uh, an additional maintenance training or anything else that they might need. So basically, in short, as long as the city of Saginaw and the Saginaw Police Department wants a canine program, you're secure. We will be here to make sure that they're going. Our future for us, we are currently a fund with the Saginaw Community Foundation. They hold our money. Uh, we would like to eventually break off become a nonprofit on our own so we could reach outside of Saginaw County. Uh, several years back, Saginaw County had a program called Cops and Kids that provided the officers with books that they were able to hand out to kids that they came across. We would like to bring back a portion of that, maybe on a smaller scale, because our primary goal is to keep the dogs working and keeping everything covered through them. Bringing books back into the program or into the to the community would just kind of be something extra. Not sure if we can go full scale on it, but our current uh, confirmed community events that we're going to participate in will be the Dog Bowl. We'll again go back to Johnson's Giant Pumpkin Farm. Last year we participated on a weekend at the Renaissance Festival in Holly, which was a huge success. And then uh, also working with Capoco Community Credit Union on setting up a 5K fundraiser for the program. So that's kind of what we're looking at for this year. Um, it's pretty much all that I wanted to share. I don't know if the officers have anything, anything to share. We didn't really want to stop Jody midstream. <laughs> like uh, she's a little triple A and just won't let anyone take over for her. Yeah, she'll shake her head, but it's true. Now, if anybody has any questions, let us know. I think she covered everything, maybe a little bit more than you thought. Uh, we thought it'd be about 10 minutes and it'd be about 20, but uh, just a little more. Council pretty. members, any questions? Uh, Councilman Ball, do you look like you'd like to? I don't know how you can see that on my face. But I got it. I, I can just see that <laughs> but, uh, anticipation there. That I'm sorry to bring this up, but I just got to know um, at Milton Hall incident, why they didn't let the dog go? Why didn't they? Yes. I'll tell you, actually, Jeff was there. I will tell you what would have happened, and this has happened all across the country. If the dog would have been released, as agitated as he was, he would have started stabbing the dog. The dog is a piece of equipment we'll replace. It. We'll grieve for a while, but we'll replace our dog. But I know what officers will do. I would hope that they wouldn't, but I, in that case, I think I know what would have happened. They would have still shot, and they would have not only 
unfortunately, Milton Hall would have been deceased, but the dog would have as well. Now, could have the dog prevented it in that situation if the dog was behind him and could have come up on him? But, it, but watching the video, he was so concentrated on the dog, he would have never allowed that to happen. So you, you know, we train so much for that, that in that situation, I don't think it would have helped. That's just me personally. If, if I would have been in that situation, if the officers could have kept him like somewhat distracted to the front of him and the dog could have got behind him and went and grabbed his arm, that would have been perfect. But you could see he, he was concentrated on the dog so much, so it was almost nearly impossible, I think. Um, so you would have ended up with shots still being fired and now the dog being dead too. Um, and that, that has happened, there are videos all over. There are dogs that have been released and they'll even like go to stab the dog and the officers will kill the dog before it even reaches the person. So that was a no-win situation even with the dog, so. I, I had to ask because it, it, it keeps puzzling me. You know, I know we went through some litigation and you know, I'm thinking about the cost and, and the, uh, what happened to the city during that time. And, mm -hmm. I just personally thought that it would have been better to let the dog go loose. So that that's my opinion. So I, I just had to ask that question. But I thought you do. I thought the dogs normally attack from the front. Well, they will any way that they can. Mm -hmm. But there are times we train in different scenarios and in situations like that. That if you can send them from a location that maybe the bad guy or gal don't see, and they don't expect it, it would have eliminated it. But in that case, he knew no matter where. We would have went to the back of him. He would have still known where it was at. So, um, yeah. Thank you. How old are the now puppies? He is four and a half, and Jeff's, I believe, is six or six and a half. What's the life expectancy? Well, it kind of depends on the dog. Even though Jeff's dog is older, he is smaller and a little bit more energetic. It's a lot more energy, so he may last longer. My dog's ninety pounds. Eight, eight and a half years. I sh hopefully will get out of mine uh, before he's replaced. Um, he looks the, pretty. The average, is ten, the average is seven to ten years. Okay. okay. Kilo may be the first, uh, well, size-wise, I don't know. They're kind of neck and neck who would retire first. It really just kind of depends. Okay. So yeah. we're, we're roughly, we're prepared for Kilo to be to the first based on his age, but... But that don't have to be true. No, that is right. Okay. I mean, okay. uh, unfortunately, they, we've had a lot of dogs around the country this year get cancer, and so they retire early. And okay. you know, so not gonna wood that won't happen to our dogs. But I mean, we plan for that financially if that happens. Um, you know, we train a lot of dogs, so we have replacements on hand whenever we need them to. So. Um, so you actually have a dog yeah. in reserve right now. Myself and some people happen. have a company, and we actually, okay. uh, agencies come to us, and we pre-service the dogs in, in agencies all over Michigan, we okay. have supply dogs too. So we got dogs on the ground now that are ready to go if he was to go down, so. Okay. He look friendly, but he got teeth. <laughs> but he look friendly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, uh, Councilwoman Annie Bench. Thank you so much for your efforts and to help us continue this program. Um, unfortunately, I was when I was a the victim of a, a robbery, um, they used the dogs. This was back in rookies day, but um, I, from my own personal experience, it was it's very obvious what, how valuable this this service is. And they were able to track the people who robbed me and and caught them. Mm -hmm. And it was all because the dogs were brought in. So I, yeah, I really yeah, we, appreciate we, your effort. Yeah, we have our challenges in the city, but we know how important the program is. And like we said, we donate a lot of hours to, you know, we don't get paid for any of these events that we go to because we feel so strongly how beneficial it is. Not only just for the city, but just for the community and the kids all over. I mean, we've opened a lot of doors because of them. And, you know, someone calls and, hey, can you do a demo? We'll be there. Um, you know, our staffing is maybe an issue, so if it's a day where we're working, maybe we won't be able to do it. But otherwise, I tell you, you know, People call us constantly. You know, they get on the Facebook page, and we've had calls at 2.30 in the morning, what Jody has. Hey, yeah. can you come and do this? And it's an out-of-state person. Uh, but our Facebook page every day, we're updating and adding things to it. Um, yesterday, I got another $3,100 on a traffic stop from a drug guy, and I did a track over on GM property that was over a mile long and found the guy. So we got things that we add constantly, but uh, I mean, we're busy summertime. Jeff and I don't get a break. We do a lot of tracking in the city. And we do a lot of car stops. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilman Tibbs. So next. I just want to uh, piggyback on that. As a prosecutor, I see all the time how the uh, K-9 unit is called, and it's, it's a, we're grateful that uh, you being a city resident, you get to respond there real quick, and you saw a lot of, a lot of cases that way. And the fact that you're pretty much self-sufficient, that's a great thing as well. Um, so it's, it's just thank you for your efforts. Uh, Officer Stacer, in terms of the dogs, see, you have a company, you have a good supply. So, do you, I mean, these are police dogs, but do you work with personal family adoption or? Uh, well, we have people that call us. We have dogs that people can't keep, so we will take them on and find homes for them. Um, one of the guys does a lot of civilian training. Um, we now are venturing into the bed bug end of it. This past weekend, we were uh, downstate. Four of us went down there to certify bed bug dogs. So we're going to have labs that we're going to get, and we're going to certify them in bed bugs because people are begging to have them, civilians, and then even the hotels. It's a big thing now. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to venture into that. So uh, I used to work a lot of overtime, and there is a lot of overtime around here. But now people are like, you don't even work any overtime well, because I've been so busy doing that. But yeah, we do a lot of civilian dogs too. But our niche is police dogs is what we do. The classes at Delta College are only police dog related. Uh, we're going to get some classes here and hopefully we can sponsor them through the city and have other agencies come to us so we can, you know, collaboration is a big deal for us too. So. I mean, yes, go ahead. Uh, Jody, you mentioned that the, the uh, food companies, uh, are the, we said one was in Midland and the other one was where? The other one is Canada. Uh, I'm not sure where they're based out of. Uh, Officer Wenzel was actually in, that was the first donation that we had received. He was in picking up food for for Kilo, and the rep was there. We asked, uh, we had a sponsor, no, as well. Normally each of our, each representative throughout the country will sponsor two police dogs. He already, I believe he had one in the Flint area, if I'm not mistaken, and then he was looking for another one, so oh, we jumped on board with that we got lucky, so I'm not sure where they're out of. So they, they, they eat different foods, obviously. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Wai Song is a natural company. They're, they're headquartered out of Midland. Uh, they, we reached out to them because they, both Midland City Dogs, they sponsor them. So we asked kind of basically for a little discount on the food, you know. And they said, no, no, we'll actually give it to you. So once a month I go over there and they supply me with $100 a month in food, which is more than adequate to feed them. And they will feed him, they said, until he passes away. Even once he retires, they're on board with me. So they, they do four dogs, one in Minnesota, and now three here in Michigan uh, locally. So, I mean, they're great. Mm. Well, I have a German Shepherd, so I'm trying to make sure I get some good food for him, too. <laughs> I, I have three German Shepherds, one work dog and then two house dogs. And I tell you, my house dogs made a huge difference just switching over to that food. But, I mean, that's neither here nor there. But, I mean, it really improved their coat and all that. So I, I'm kind of glad that, you know, these stuff over because it helped me out personally. So. So I can contact you and get some information sure about it. Okay, all right. Thank you. Great job. Really appreciate the support of Jody and the, and the organization. I tell you, uh, extremely important service uh, uh, that the uh, the K9 unit provides to this community and this region. So uh, I'm I'm a full supporter of what you guys are doing, and uh, I'm glad to hear all the uh, outside activities uh, as well as the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, operation that you guys do in the community in various locations. So. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Jody, uh, well, a couple things. One, I, I just found out it's cheaper to feed the police dog than the teenager. <laughs> so that, that's that's good uh, uh, for that. Uh, Jody, um, you, you don't, uh, I'm, I'm sensing you don't do this alone. Do you have a board? Do you have a committee? Do you have, uh, and you have people with you Not joining yet. us today? Or what's the? No, right. It's It's, me and these guys and their spouses, uh, and, and then my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, we, my, I, my whole reason for getting involved with this was uh, in January 2010, my nephew was involved with a drug incident in Standish, uh, resulted in, I believe, seven expulsions of students. And then shortly after, it was April that I had lost, my, my brother had passed away from drug use. So it just kind of became a passion of keeping these units working, reinstating the program that Airnet had, and then when these guys had reached out to me, they had heard what I was doing in Airnet, 
and wanted to keep the program going here. Um, so it, right now, it's we're, we don't have a board because we're through the community foundation. We're a nonprofit under their umbrella. Once we break off, then yes, we'll we'll get a board. Um, but primarily, it's just us right now. Okay, good, good. Well, thank you very much, uh, boy. It, it just seems like an awful lot of stuff, uh, and it boils down to just uh, the three people we see standing here and and a couple others in the family. So thank you very much. That's a wonderful presentation. Council members, any other comments or we're all set? Thank you very, very much. Thank and you. I'm sure. There you go. Yeah. That's a well-trained dog. He's, he sat there for a long time. I hope that wasn't a good one. Well, thank you again to them for the work they do because um, when you look at a number of departments, it's specialized programs like that are the first to go just because they're, they're an added cost and both of those officers are patrol as well. But um, you, you know, if you look at costs around the country, when you start adding up the vet bills and the food, it gets pretty extensive. So they do a great job and I'm sure you'll see them um, if we at the National Night Out kickoff too. They usually have a table there if we... Do that again. Will we see one on Student Government Day? Well, it might see two. Okay. They're, they're both cool. available. Yeah, I have to light up to see the Oh, okay. <laughs> as mayor, as mayor, I can appoint uh, here. <laughs> and I certainly don't want to lean one way or the other, but uh, I. I sense a volunteer on this side of the table. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And that concludes the management update. Agenda. Okay. And the consent, the agenda has been available uh, at City Hall on the city's website and on SGTV channel. 191. I need a motion to adopt the consent agenda, leaving room for exceptions. It's been moved and supported. Are there any exceptions? Any exceptions? One final time. Any exceptions? Being none. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And your next order of business is reports from boards, commissions, and committees. An appointment of board and commission members. And are there any committee reports? Any committee reports? Uh, Councilwoman Annie Bench. Yes, thank you. Uh, the City School Liaison Committee met on February 19th after the last council meeting. Uh, we were joined by uh, County Commission Chairman Michael Hanley and also Bill Fetterspiel, and we received an update from Chief Ruth on the pre prom activities. And we have also extended a formal invitation to the county commission to continue to send representation. So we hope that continues to occur. Um, also, the boards and commissions meeting is going to be held on March 9th at 10.30 a.m. Uh, here at City Hall in conference room 104. Yes, room. So, thank you. And to our city clerk, you'll keep me informed on when we have to replace one of our council members. Is that correct? Oh, oh thank you. So, so, so beginning of May. Okay, thank you very much. Any other reports from committees, boards, commissions? Go ahead, uh, Councilman Tibbs. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just uh, announced that the uh, <coughs> crime-free lease addendum subcommittee will be meeting Tuesday, March 10, 2015, uh, between 2 and 3 p.m. here. Uh, in the council chambers. Um, okay. And uh, I don't know, it's going to be a little more formal as far as uh, having a public comment okay. and um, it's possible that there could be a vote at that particular meeting on, okay. the, on the proposal. To bring it to the council? Council, yes. Okay. Sounds good. Any questions on that? The date again? Yep. The date again? I'm sorry, March 10th? Oh, I think you the 15th. All right. Any other boards, commissions? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve the appointments one through four, leaving room for exceptions. 
Are there any exceptions? Any exceptions? Being none, all in favor signify by aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Do I have SVSU students with us today or any students from SVSU? No? Okay. okay. Any business before? Go ahead, Councilman Clark. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I, I wanted to bring up something that perhaps is very low <laughs> key at this point. <laughs> if it has anything to do with a spinning Saginaw? Well, it can. <laughs> but those of you who are proud to be uh, uh -huh. a resident of Saginaw, can mm -hmm. obtain the new sa or the new old yep. Saginaw pen. Yep, absolutely. The uh, they are available. I believe it's through the Downtown Development Authority. Mm -hmm. ha has them available, yep. and they can order more if they need them. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they're a couple dollars a piece. Very mm -hmm. inexpensive. I find they're great items to hand out to people. Okay. And so, if anyone ha would like, I have some now. If anyone wants any, that's here. But also, the only they pledge I ask you to do is make sure and promise that you wear it. It doesn't okay. do any good if you leave it in the drawer. So. Yeah. But we should be yeah. proud. This town yeah. is a wonderful yeah. city, and it's growing, and it's developing, and it's coming back, and we want to, we should promote it. So, Anyone interested? Myself. I'm sure some of the other council persons have some. And then through the DDA or city manager, I'm sure can steer you the right way. Thank you. That's Mr. Mayor. Pardon me? 24 carats. Yep. So, anything else? Any other council member? So, at this time, I do want to recognize our SVSU students who are bashful sitting there. And uh, uh, we certainly want to welcome you. If there's any questions that any of us can answer for you or the city staff after the meeting, uh, they are available for you. So, council members, entertain a motion to adjourn. So been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Being none, all in favor signify by aye. aye. Those opposed, we're adjourned.